Welcome in, welcome in, you guys. We're going to be doing the PERT math test. Um, this is for the pre-algebra practice. So if you know anybody that's um, taking the PERT in Florida, please share this with them. Um, also, it can help you with the TSI test, the AccuPlacer, any entrance exam, college exam um, test. This will help you with. Hello, welcome, welcome. How y'all doing on a Tuesday? We have a snow day out here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> Man, so it's been nice this morning. Who else? Anybody else got a snow day today? Thank you for the follow. And the double taps, I really appreciate it. Oh, you guys got tornado warnings? Ooh. D, praying, praying that you don't get hit. Whew, yes. I'm like, the snow might not be that bad <laughs> compared to tornadoes in the south. Mm. Hi, just Maggie. Just called Maggie. Hey, hun. No, but a lot of rain. They cancel school. Nice, nice. All right, so let's start with number one. Okay, so it says, what is the perimeter of a rectangle that has a length of nine centimeters and a width of six centimeters? All right, so what you guys get for number one? Um, so I'm originally from born and raised in California, but I moved to Wisconsin, got married and all that stuff. So I'm in Wisconsin right now. And it's just raining. It's not no snow, but they say the snow is supposed to come and hit us pretty hard. So I'm like, ooh, I hope I don't have to shovel tomorrow. What do you guys get for number one? Anybody get anything for number one? So what is the perimeter? You cold now? Yes. <laughs> And it's so funny because when my um ABB, you guys getting ABBs, let me tell you, when my family comes and visit, they're like, they, they, yeah, it's just totally different how your body ad adapts, right? Like, I thought I was like, um, yeah, my mom's like, you're not freezing? And I'm like, nah, this is good weather. 36 degrees is warm, right? <laughs> so it's just, it's your body is amazing. So we have a length of nine and a width of six, okay? And whenever we find the perimeter, this is the huge thing, you guys. You have to understand what perimeter means. Perimeter means the border. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the sides, okay? So we're doubling nine plus nine, and that gives us 18. And then six plus six gives us 12. And then we should get... 30. Now, you see what they did here. You see how they both put 30 here, right? One is centimeters and one is centimeters squared. By just looking at this perimeter, you have to go with C because squared means we're finding the area and not the perimeter. So it is C. Ooh, okay, Sean. I see you. 1C, 2B, 3D. All right, let's check it. All right, so don't fall for that trick there, okay? We're doing perimeter. We only have centimeters, no squared up there, only when you do area. All right, let's check number two. So what is the area of a square? Okay, draw your pictures, you guys. So we're going to draw a square that has a length of 15. And what we have to know about a square is all the sides are the same, right? So this has to be 15 as well. Um, Miss Teacher, you ain't know. Oh, <laughs> how to build a house? <laughs> you right on that, okay? I gotta pay somebody for that. So we got fifteen, fifteen. All right, and then we're gonna find the area. So we're gonna do area equals length times width, or you might have heard of side squared. Okay, both of those, both of those work. So if we do fifteen times fifteen, then we'll get. 225 but 
What do you guys say? Is it A or is it B? Which one do we get? Angie, thank you so much for the heart. Me. Thank you, hun. I really appreciate the gifts, you guys. And the double taps. Can everybody take a chance? Take a second to double tap. Can we get to 5K likes? Thank you. I see those hearts coming in. B, B, B. Good. It is B because it's saying area. So your units automatically have to be centimeter squared. So if you're taking this test and you see area, you know A and D are out right away. Then that gives you a 50-50 chance, right? And then once you saw 15, you know, well, 15 doubled has to be bigger. 15 times 15 has to be bigger than C. So you could, you could really do this problem without doing the math by just reasoning it, if that makes sense. Okay. Let's look at number three. Yes, C centimeters times centimeters equals centimeters squared. Yes. Hey, you guys, just call Maggie if you guys are in Florida or actually if you're all over the world. She has a fantastic, fantastic um, realtor program. And for people that want to be um, real estate people that are trying to pass the math test, man, her website, her products, she goes live, I believe, every day. Um, catch her time. So any of the, my real estate people that are trying to get into to pass the real estate exam and math is struggling, follow her because I follow her. Okay. And she like teaches me so much. Okay. So let's do number three. So use order of operations to simplify. Okay. All right. So we're thinking about PEMDAS. Okay. PEMDAS here. So we're going to start inside our parentheses, and then we're going to start with multiplication because that comes before subtraction. So we're going to do 10 minus 4 times 2 is 8, and we have this cubed minus 3, okay? 10 minus 8, we still have to work inside our parentheses, is 2 to the third power minus 3. All right, can you guys put it in the chat? What is 2 to the third power? What do we get? Okay, we got D in the comments. Okay, five, six. Ooh, we get six. Eight. Yes, eight. Okay, so, so remember this, we never multiply these. What this is telling us is two times two times two. So two times two is four. Four times two is eight. So eight minus three, like somebody said, the answer is five. Yes. Great, you guys. All right, let's keep it going. So they start off right off with some word problems, right? Then we go to order of operations. We have another word problem. Thank you, Just Call Maggie. Thank you for the rose, hun. Oh, you're so welcome, Genevieve. So let's go to number four, okay? It says, what is the area of a triangle that has a base of 9 inches and a height of 10 inches? So always draw your picture. So we're going to draw a triangle. We have a base that is 9 and we have a height that is 10. Does anybody know the area formula for a triangle? So Martel said it's D. Good. Okay, uh, Martel, I'm liking your answer right away because I see at least inches squared, right? So right now, I can eliminate this and this because I know I'm dealing with area. I have a 50-50 chance right now. Length times width. Base times height. Ooh, close, close, close. You guys, so this is what, right? We don't remember the formulas, but it's a half times base times height. You can't forget that half. So you're taking half of a rectangle, right? So that's why it's a triangle. Try to remember it that way. So our base is 9. So I'm going to plug in 9 here. And I'm going to plug in 10 for my height. And we're going to take half of that. So 9 times 10 is 90. And half of 90, well, I know it's not 90 because I have to take half of 90. So it's B. Yes, KP. Yep, it's B. Martel, <laughs> don't forget. It's okay. Yep. A lot of people forget this half. So it's it's good. Forget it now, right? So when you take the test, you got it. 
This is the place to make mistakes. Good. Morgan said, I guessed right. I love it. <laughs> so let's look at number five. So we're going to use order of operations to simplify. All right. Um, can somebody tell me where do we start with this? So somebody said C C. You guys are saying C. Ooh, 12. Everybody's getting 12. Thank you for the share. Thank you for the double taps. We're at 3.1k. Can we get to 5k likes? Can everybody double tap their screen for me, please? Exponents, parentheses. Good. So we're gonna start with the exponents. Remember, this never means 4 times 2. No, it's negative 4 times negative 4. So a negative times a negative is always a positive. And 4 times 4 is 16. So we're going to copy this down. Negative 3 times 2 minus, and then I just did that, 16 plus 2. Okay, we got this 16 right here from doing this. Negative 4 times negative 4. This minus sign is from here, okay? Now, so what are we going to do? We're going to multiply. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 minus 16 plus 2. All right. I have a question. Can I add this and then subtract it? Yes or no? Put it in the chat. Yes or no? Can I add these and then subtract it? No, 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 no. Wonderful. No, we have to go from left to right. We must go from left to right, else it's going to give us the wrong answer. So we have to do negative 6 minus 16, which is negative 22. And then we're going to add 2. So if somebody owes you $22, they paid you 2, they still owe you $20. So our answer is D. Yep, you have a question? Put it in the chat. Yes. Yay, good. I'm glad you got it. What's your question? Does anybody have any questions on this one? Because I know a lot of people were saying C, but do you understand you have to go from left to right when you have addition and subtraction? Oh, thank you, Morgan. Why can you not distribute the negative into the parentheses? Oh, okay. Because we can't multiply before doing exponents. So when we have our order of operations rule, it says parentheses, exponents. Then we multiply and divide from left to right. And then we add and subtract from left to right. So you're saying what if you if you if you distribute this, what you're saying is you could do multiplication before exponents, and that's not the case. So that's why you cannot multiply this negative one before taking care of the exponents. Great question. I hope that makes sense. Thank you for the follows, you guys. So any more questions? Oh, no, no, don't feel silly. Those are great questions. I'm sure somebody else had it in the comment too. So never feel like, like the question's not good. All right, let's go to number six. So it says use order of operations to simplify. And of course... Right. I must have been sleepy because where is the problem to simplify? So we're going to have to go to the next. OK, because we clearly don't have no problem. But I just wrote the multiple choice. I don't know what I was thinking. So let's keep it pushing. OK, so we're going to go to seven here and it says simplify. All right. What are we getting here? Do you guys get A, B, C or D? <laughs> T.O. said, I thought you were sleepy. Clearly, right? <laughs> D, B, C, C. Oh, we kind of all over the place with this one. All right. So we have to understand when they give us these brackets, that is special. 
They're called absolute value. Okay? So this is absolute value. And what absolute value tells us, anything negative in it has to come out as a positive. So I'm going to make this a nine. And then I'm going to drop down everything else. Now, a negative and a negative. A negative times a negative is always a positive. So we can change this to a big plus sign. And then nine plus two will give us 11. So D is our answer. Good. Yes, I see those D's coming in. Wonderful. Good, you guys. All right, let's go to eight. It says simplify. What do you guys get for number eight? Is it A, B, C, or D? Thank you for the double taps. We made it to 5.4K likes. Thank you. Thank you so much for the support, you guys. So we have C, 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 C. Ooh, we all on one accord with this one. Okay, so let's check it. So if it's if it was a positive bracket, do you change it to a negative? Great question. No, absolute value, you always just come out, it always comes out positive. If it's positive, it stays positive. Great question. Yes, I do help with um, trigonometry. What are you guys doing in trig right now? So six minus eight is going to be, we're going to keep these absolute values, negative two. Okay, we're going to keep that. We're going to drop down our negative four and plus. Now, we're going to take out this negative two because it's an absolute value. So we're going to make it a positive two. We have negative four plus two. Well, we do, we get C. So you guys were good. Wonderful, everybody. Um, do you think you could help me with logs and natural logs? Ethan, yes. Um, I'll put that on the to-do list because I do. Oh, you guys, let me tell you guys. If you go to my YouTube, that's where I um, post these lives from. Okay, and then I also have mini lessons over there on specific topics. So I will make us up some logs and natural logs um, problems. Are you in Algebra 2 or are you in, um, what is this? Are you in, a uh, what is it, logs? You Are you in college? Do you help with the T-Tab? Well, oh, I never heard of that. T-A-B-E. I will look it up. Thank you. I'm always looking up new tests, you guys. Oh, hold on. I'm in college algebra. Perfect. Got you. Because, you know, you have to know what kind of level you're looking at. Like, you know, because college level is a little bit different than high school, right? All right. So I got you. I'll be making a, I'll make some live for that. So simplify. It says negative four minus all this craziness, right? So what I like to do, because my eyes are old, right? And so I'm like, okay, I can't be telling what all this is, but I am going to highlight my like terms. So negative four and negative seven are, are like terms because they have no numbers attached to them. Then I have an X um, to the eighth Y. So I have this right here and I have this right here. Those are like... And then my last like terms are going to be this plus 6xy and xy here, okay? So for my people that struggle um, with like identifying like terms, if you color code, it really helps your eyes. Like, okay, I already know I'm looking at my yellows, right? I'm looking at my blues. I'm looking at my pinks. So that's the one way. Good. So we have an A, D, B. Oh, we kind of all over the place with this. So most of our answers are starting with this term, our blue term. So let's see. Negative 5 minus 8. Okay. Somebody owes you $5. They said, let me get 8 more. How much do they totally owe you? Negative 13 x to the 8th y. Right there, I can stop. I know... D and C are out. 
Now I have a 50-50 chance, but wait a minute. I see that this is 16. No, whenever we add, the variables stay the same. So B is my answer. I would save my time and move on. Right? I would not take time finishing out the whole problem when it's a, if it's a time test. So it is B. Now, the only way you would get this is if you're multiplying. But then this negative 13 wouldn't be because you would multiply these two. So that's why this is wrong because they um, doubled that. Okay. So we have our blue. We have our red, which is going to be. But we'll finish it out, right? Because we're practicing right now. So six. Remember, you can always put a one right here. So six plus one is seven XY. So we're, that's our red. And then our yellow is. Somebody owes you four dollars. They said, let me get another seven. Well, they owe you 11. So that's how you get the negative 11. Say that again. Which part? <laughs> Which part do I want to say? So we're going to do. So let's. Which part? Oh. Um, where were you when I was in high school? I love learning new things. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Yes. Well, it's his turn on the tablet. Y'all been on the tablet all morning, huh? Can he have a turn? Thank you, baby. Okay. So... Yep, I do algebra too. I do. I so this this page is dedicated from sixth grade and up, um, and college algebra like all the way up. So this page, I have been getting a lot of requests for elementary, and since I do have a first grader, um, I am thinking about starting a page for elementary math from like kindergarten, preschool, all the way up to fifth grade. So let's do number ten, you guys. Oh, thank you. So number 10, simplify. Okay, don't let these fractions throw you off. Do not let these fractions scare you, okay? What are you guys getting in the chat for number 10? Is it A, B, C, or D? Oh, yes, I need elementary for my fourth grader. Yes. Okay, see, that's what I've been, yeah. I know, like, um... You know, as an algebra, as an algebra, like high school teacher, like I did algebra one, geometry, it's like really puzzling to me how um, the elementary, I don't know, I just, when you're good at something and then you see your child, like you have to teach your child, I don't know, it's just weird. Like when you're good at something and it doesn't second, it doesn't naturally come to your own child, it's like, ooh. Thank you so much for the rose. You know what I'm talking about, my parents? Like when you're really good at something and then you see your child struggling and then you just want them to get it. You don't want them to struggle. And it's like, how come you don't see it? But it's just the patience and the understanding. I loved algebra, but now it seems like rocket science. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Whenever we add fractions, we have to have the same same common denominator okay and that's the problem because it's like well what is a common denominator we don't have to guess why because we have multiple choice so if we're looking here most of our denominators our bottom part of our fractions is 10 this is the only one that's like huh right so we're not gonna even look at that we're gonna look at 10 so i have to ask myself how can i make five go to a 10 how can I make 5 go to a 10 is if I multiply it by 2. But what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Same thing over here. I ask myself, how can I make 2 go to a 10? I have to multiply it by 5. What do I do to the bottom? I always have to do to the top. Good, you guys. So now we can do 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. X plus... 5 times 1 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10x. So now we can add our numerators, our top of our fractions. So we're going to do 6 plus 5, 
That gets us 11. Did I miss something? 6 plus 5 gets us 11. I wonder if I wrote this right. Over 10x. I must have been looking at something else. Sick. Ooh. You guys, why am I? Why is this not making sense? It's it was a negative three fifths. Thank you. Clearly, right here. Whew, okay, because I'm like, why is this not working? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. I so you guys are helping me. So I forgot the negative that was right here. It was looking like my fraction. I didn't see it. So this one you got to pay attention. So that's supposed to be a negative three fifths. Thank you, you guys. So a negative six plus five gets us not 11. But um, if you subtract these, you get a negative 1 over 10x, which is A right here. Yes, it does change the equation. Thank you, thank you so much, you guys. Perfect. Good. Any questions on this one? Do you guys see how I had the negative right here, but it looked like it was part of the fraction? All right. Let's go to 11 then if there's no questions. Not me paying attention and I'm 33 out of school. <laughs> I love it, Bella. <laughs> Come on in. Refresh that um, brain, right? <laughs> so simplify. It's not times two. What is not times two? Oh, same, Bella. Same. <laughs> okay, so simplify. 0.24x times 1.2 z Ooh, right so there so if we're not using a calculator here we're gonna do 12 times 24 okay we're gonna worry about our decimals later okay so let's just do 12 times 24 so 2 times 4 is 8 and then 2 times 2 is 4 carry the 0 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 2 is 2, okay? So we have 8, 4 plus, we're adding, 4 plus 4 is 8, and we have a 2. Now, this is where our decimals come into play. I have two digits behind the decimal here and one digit here. So I have a total of three digits. My decimal's right here, so I have to move it over three spaces, so I'm moving it one, two, three. So now my decimal's here. So my answer is going to be 0 0.288. So I don't even have to care about these variables, really. I'm just looking at this. So B is my answer. And whenever you, whenever anybody says, what's X times Z? It's not going to make sense in your brain. It's never going to make sense, right? Because it's like, I don't know what the, a letter times letter is. Put them together. Just tell your brain. Squish them together. It's always going to be X, Z. And it's always going to be alphabetical order, you guys. Okay? So that's why X comes before Z. Oh, I love it. I need your help. My son's in first grade math. I'm really going to start that channel then. Because, yes, I'm like, okay, let's count by fives. Let's count by tens. Right? We have They have to count all the way up to 120. Um... They have to know uh, the the sets of the pairs of, of 10, like 2 plus, 2 plus what? 2 plus 8, 8 plus 2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And it's like, man, how do I like just take for granted, right? It's like, oh my goodness. You really, when you have kids, you really have to teach them every single thing. Let me tell you. They do teach kids differently. They do. Because I'm used to the old this way, right? Let me tell you, they got boxes where you break it down. You put the two here, the four here. Then you're doing, it's all kind of different techniques. Oh, congrats. You're taking um intermediate algebra. I have another student that's taking intermediate algebra right now. Um, and we're on, we're getting close to the end. We, our last section is going to be logs, 
chapter nine, and then the final time. It's it's an online class. But whoo, is yours face to face or online? I'm already sharing your page with my kids. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. They do this space kind of math. My grandson. Would you say my grandson doesn't understand my way? Yeah. <laughs> And it's like when I tutor, like I, I usually only tutor sixth grade and up. But, um, you know, I, my, the mom was like, come on, please tutor. Because um, I feel like you have to have a special like you have to be special to teach elementary. You, like you have to really be like patient, bubbly, like a special person. I feel like you can't be. I don't know. You just have to be special. I just I love all my elementary teachers. They really have to have a special heart. But I have a fourth grader. And, um, and bless her heart. Like, she's so smart. Just, I'm like, wow. Like, you know, when you pour into your kids, oh, they can excel the expectations. Let me tell you. But it's just, it's the ways that her teacher, that she's been teaching me, her teacher showing her all this math. I'm like, wow. So she teaching me and she don't even know it. So evaluate the following expression for X equals three and Y equals four. All right. So we have X equals three. So we're going to plug this in, okay? Whenever, whenever, whenever they tell you what a letter equals, you have to tell yourself, plug in, substitute in. So that means I'm going to replace this. So I'm putting 3 to the second plus 4 to the second. What do you guys get? D is the answer. Okay, D is the answer. Ooh, all right. So... Remember, do not do three times two. Never do that. Do three times three plus four times four. Three times three is nine. And then four times four is 16. 16 plus nine, D. Good job. It's 25. Wonderful. Good. All right. So we did some order of operations. We did some adding fractions, multiplying decimals. We did some evaluating, plugging in. We're going to do some more plug in and then we're going to start getting into solving equations. I passed my T's exam. Congratulations, future nurse. Or I don't want to say all nurses, but what are you going in for? Are you going to be a nurse? Are you going to be what are you going to what are you going to do? Or, um, respiratory therapist. Congrats. Put it in the chat. We always want to celebrate somebody that has been studying, passed it. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing. Yes. <laughs> All right, 13. Evaluate the following expression for x equals two thirds and y equals one half. I'm going to paralegal school. Oh, nice. At the age of 59, it's never too late. Never, ever, ever. If you still got breath in your head, in your lungs, it's never too late. Oh, you're welcome. Yep, so you could teach your son. Wish one day I pass my T's. You keep at it, you will pass it. We ain't gonna wish it, we gonna do it. It's 2024, right? Is the year to get done things we should have been done with. You will pass it. All right. So I'm going to replace this two thirds for X. So I'm going to do two thirds here minus my Y is one half times my X is two thirds plus. My Y is one half. All right. Now it's like, who? right? These fractions. Why? 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 Okay. Remember, whenever you're subtracting or adding fractions, you have to have the same denominator. Can somebody tell me what will be the number that I need these to go to? Right, Bella? I know. This look crazy, don't it? With all these fractions. Six, six, six. Wonderful, you guys. Yes, six. So I'm going to multiply. 
this three times two will give me six and then two times three okay so two times two is four over six minus three over six and since we did this this is the same thing we know this is going to be four over six plus three over six four minus three is one six keep those parentheses okay because they do mean something they mean times and then four plus three is seven over six a good seven over 36 you guys see it yes so when we multiply we multiply straight across so six times six is 36 and one times seven is seven so if you said a was your answer wonderful good job good all right let's do 14. evaluate the following expression for x equals this decimal y equals this again remember i'm plugging in so when i see an x i'm plugging in that number and when i see a y i'm replacing it for 3.4 so I'm going to do 0 0.2, I'm keeping the parenthesis, and then I'm going to put 3.4 squared minus 4. Um, could we use difference of two squares for 13? That's a great question. And so you're saying, because you know this is a difference of squares. Sorry, you guys. Let's go back up here real quick because I, I like that question. That is a great question. So you're saying, could you have done this? Could you have simplified it to this and then plugged in your X and plugged in your Y? Well, let's see. So if we do two thirds to the second minus one half to the second. So we have to do two thirds times two thirds, which gives us four ninths minus one half times one half gets us one fourth. Then you're gonna say what what times what? What what can we make these the same, right? Well, we look here, we got 36, so I would times this by four. And then I would times this by 9. So 4 times 4 would give us 16 over 36 minus 9 over 36. And 16 minus 9, 7 over 36. And yes, this, this will get you that answer or this will get you that answer. I love it. I didn't even see it that way. So good. There's multiple ways. If if your teacher or somebody tells you there's only one way, that's limited knowledge. In math, there's you could take many streams to get to the right answer. And that's why I love math because it's not just one-sided. Like it's not just, oh, you have to do it this way. No, I, I could do it this way. I could do it that way. Multiple ways. Yes, there's always multiple ways. Thank you, Momo, for the roses. All right, so let's jump back to this one. Okay, so we have 3.4 squared. So really, we're going to do 34 times 34. We're going to worry about our decimal later, okay? So 4 times 4 is 16. And then 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Carry the 0, because we're moving over. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So we get a 6, 3 plus 2 is 5, 1, 1. Now we have to go back. Remember, we got these decimals. We have two digits behind our decimal. So we're going to move our decimal over two places. So this will be 11.56 minus 4. Okay. So can you guys tell me what's 11.56 minus 4 in the chat? 
Somebody give me that answer, please. What do we get? Oh, thank you, Ryan. 7.56. So we get 7.56. Thank you, thank you. And we have 0 0.2. So we could, we're doubling this 7.56. Well, if I'm looking at my answer here, double of 7.5 has to be 14, 15. So I'm, if I had like zero seconds to guess, I would say it's B. I would go with B. But let me show, let's see if it's really B, okay? Okay, so we would do seven, five, six. Forget the decimals. Whenever you're multiplying, just forget it, okay? For right now. So we do six times two is 12. Two times five is 10 plus one is 11. And two times four, two times seven is 14 plus one is 15. There it goes. I don't even have to worry about the decimals because that's the only close option they gave us. So it is B. B is the answer. Yep. I had C. Ah, you had C. Okay. Is it because of this right here? Or I thought you did the exponents behind the four and came up with 16. Oh, okay. Then you multiplied. Oh, okay. You thought it was like not this wasn't attached and just have 16 here instead of 3.4 to the second. I get that. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody said they can't see. Thank you for the rose, Zaire. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the next. So um, somebody said B. B for this one. All right, so let's check it out. Okay, this is a two-step. So what's the first thing I have to move to this side? And how do I move it? Can you guys put it in the chat? Thank you for the double taps. Thank you for the follows, you guys. Can we get to 10K likes? Can everybody double tap the screen, please, for me? Plus 25, add 25. Wonderful, yes, we want to move this negative 25 over here first. So we're going to add 25 to both sides. And we get 5 twelfths x equals 25. Okay, now how do we get x by itself? Thank you. I see those hearts coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Oh, thank you. You guys were at 10.5K likes. Divide the fraction. Yes, we can divide the fraction. Thank you for the shares. Divide, divide. Times by 25 to both sides. Mm. So when we want X by itself, we can either multiply by the reciprocal or divide by the fraction. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Multiply by the reciprocal. So I want to multiply by, what does that mean? The flip of this. So I want to multiply by 12 fifths. 12 fifths. Okay. This cancels and I'm left with X equals. Okay. How many times does 5 go into 25? That's what I'm looking at right now. It goes in 5 times. So then you have 5 times 12. Well, 5 times 12 is 60. And so B is our answer. Yes. Good. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do have to hop off. Um, and hopefully I will be on tonight. Tonight I'm going to be doing either... What do I have? I'm either going to be doing ASVAB or I'm going to be doing HESI. One of those. I haven't decided yet. But thank you so much for joining me. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, could you just multiply both sides by 12 and then decide, divide by 5? Yes, you could have done it that way. Yes. 
um, what time? I'm central time. And so it'd probably be around seven central time. All right. Bye, you guys.